This is Lucifer. And this is Entropy. Here again to make another exciting video. Perhaps the most exciting and most interesting video we've done yet. The name of this video is Christians, You Were Right. We were wrong all the time here. It's taken us some time to to come to grips with this reality. I mean, it's hard to admit when you're wrong and how very wrong we have been. You have told us to do our research, and we have. We knew that uh, years and years of researching the Bible, reading the entire Bible, reading books about the Bible as Christians and as not Christians and reading books on a number of different faiths and uh, well he pointed out to us that we were just ignorant about your faith so what we did is we decided to go back to the Bible go back to 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 the foundation back to the, the holy word of God amen hallelujah our eyes were blind, but now we see. You know, all those years and years that Lucy was a number of different religions, Mormon, Muslim, Jew, Christian, uh, Scientologist, etc., etc., me being a Zen Buddhist for years, and uh, being a Mormon myself in the past, and being raised an Episcopalian, number of different religions, a Sabbatarian, Sabbatarian preacher for a while, but finally, finally, thank God, thank you, Jesus, you have made us see the light, and we are here to reveal it to you, to you Christians, so that you may help us, us fledgling Christians like us, Praise the Lord that we have people like you to come on our channel and right our wrongs. It might be surprising to hear you to hear um, this come from me, Lucifera. God. My gosh, I mean, someone with the name Lucifera can go back to the Lord Jesus Christ, and it is. Uh, it Praise is such, the Lord. It is such happiness. Oh, praise the Lord. But since we are just infants, just spiritual infants, we really need you Christians to help us out here. Because we've been reading the Bible, and there's some things we just don't understand, and we know that you Christians are so much more spiritually in tune than us. And we know that you Christians are so much smarter than we are. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go through the Ten Commandments. Because there's some things I just don't understand about them. And I would really, really like for you Christians to please comment on our comment section. Please help a couple of fledgling Christians learn how to fly. Praise the Lord that we have such good kind Christians out there who never curse at us, who never call us names, who never say that we're going to burn in hell. Praise God! Now we're on your side, so you don't say those things to us anymore. Well, I read in Exodus chapter 20. I think Exodus is the book where that guy walks across the water, right? Is that it? Is that the one where the guy walks across water? No, oh, wait a second. Is that the one with the guy from Egypt? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. I forget his name. It starts with an M. Do you remember his name? Well, Jesus. Jesus? Is yes. that his name? Yes, Jesus? 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 Yes. Jesus is in Exodus chapter 20? Hmm. 
No, I think his name started with an M. Mo 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 Moses. That's right. You gotta you gotta give us a little uh, a little room here. We're just learning, okay, folks. We just learning, okay. Now, Exodus chapter twenty. Okay, this is the King James version. Now, I done hear King James was a homosexual, but I don't know. You know me. I don't know anything about that and their stuff. King James Version. All right, now. Exodus, chapter 20. King James Version. The gay one. And God spake, spake, all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now I'm awful confused, Christians. I've never been to Egypt. Have you ever been to Egypt, Lucy? No. Never been to Egypt. Hmm. Brought thee out of the land of Egypt. I've never even been there. So, right away I'm wondering, what do these Ten Commandments have to do with me? I'm not a Jew. I'm not a descendant of a Jew. So why am I supposed to keep these Ten Commandments? These Ten Commandments were to the Hebrews. <sighs> this part I don't understand. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now I thought, now I thought there was only one God. Hmm. hmm. That is curious. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hmm. Here we're told that there is only one God. Yet, he says, do not put another God before him. Could you Christians please explain these things to us? We're just fledgling little Christians. We don't understand these things. Please, please, please help us out because we know, Lucy and I know, we have come to the understanding that you folks are just a lot smarter than we are. So please, please help us with this. Why does he say thou shalt have no other gods before me? I thought there weren't any more gods. Curious. Now how can he be jealous if he's the only god? That's, that's curious too. It'd be like me being jealous of an ant. I don't, doesn't make much sense to me. It doesn't make much sense to uh, be jealous of uh, stones either. Right, stones or, 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 or rocks or, or sticks or all kinds of things that we can be jealous of doesn't make much sense. So can you please, Christians, please, please help us understand these things. We're these, so new. These are so confusing. It really is. It's so confusing, especially for our little brains that haven't done the research. Now then, let's get to the second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Wow! That's a mouthful! There's lots of questions I have about this one. Let's see here. Now, I think I have been to churches that have all kinds of images and statues. Mostly the Catholic Church. Oh, in the Mormon Church, too. They got lots of pictures of Jesus and God and all that stuff. But it says... Don't do that. Hmm. I just don't understand, Christians. Do, do you understand these Christians? Because I don't. 
Very difficult to understand people that do exactly opposite of what the Ten Commandments say and then turn around and get all uppity and angry because we're not abided by the Ten Commandments. Now the other part of this, it says, Do not bow thyself to them, nor serve them, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah, jealous. Why would a God be jealous of anything? If a God is a God, then he should, uh, shouldn't be so full of uh, um, low self-esteem. I mean, he's a jealous God? The only jealous people I ever met are people with low self-esteem that they think that their partner's running around on them. Curious. You would think a god would be above such petty, petty emotions. Right? Oh, yeah. Now, 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 honey. We don't say hell anymore. We say heck, heck yeah, okay? Heck yeah. We're Christians now. Praise the Lord! Amen. And, you know, since uh, since God is jealous and of all these wicked things, we should be the same way, don't you think? Well, doesn't the Bible say we're supposed to be like God? Yeah. I thought we were supposed to be like Him, so I guess we could be awful jealous, too, huh? Oh, yeah. This, though, is even more curious to me. It says he visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and onto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me? Wow. So let me figure this out. So if my great, great grandfather one day bows down in front of a golden calf, then I'm held responsible for it? Even if I'm a good, God loving Christian? This just gets curiouser and curiouser, folks. Please, Christians, please help us out here. Try to try to help us figure these things out. We're just not bright like you folks. Well, all right. Verse 6 says, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Well, that's nice. That's sweet. Finally, we read something good here. Now, all right now, we're going to go to the third commandment. I'm sure you Christians already know what the third commandment is, because you Christians know your Ten Commandments. Commandment number three, Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the Lord of thy... Uh, the, blah, blah. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. So, Lucy, you've been doing more research than I have. What is God's name? Well, his name is Jehovah, Yahweh. According to Jews, there's no, no one knows the actual, the actual pronunciation of his name. Wow. Well, so if I say, I don't know, God damn it, am I using the Lord thy God's name in vain? Is God God's name? Is it? No way. Oh. So, when all those Christians get all tied up and angry when somebody says, God damn then those per people aren't breaking this commandment because God couldn't be God's name any more than man could be my name or woman could be your name, Lucy. Any type of swearing is considered bad. Mm-hmm. I got you, Lucy. You're saying I shouldn't say God damn it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Now, I did swear, but I did not break that commandment by saying it. Now, this one, the next one, this one's the one I find just about the most interesting, at least of the first five. 
I wonder if you Christians know what commandment four is. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Here's where my confusion comes in, Christians. Here's where my confusion comes in. I look at my calendar, and my calendar has seven days on it. My calendar starts on Sunday and ends on Saturday. The Christians go to church on Sunday most of you so that's awful curious hmm hmm go to church on Sunday but not just that I wonder how many of you work six days a week and rest on the seventh day there are a lot of laws now I've been doing a little bit of research there are a lot of laws against the Sabbath. A lot of laws against the Sabbath. I'm not going to go into them all, but why don't I read a few of them to you? You can't plow, you can't plant, you can't reap, you can't gather, you can't thresh, you can't winnow, you can't sort, hmm, you can't grind, you can't sift, you can't knead, you can't cook, you can't shear, you can't launder, you can't garden, ugh, you can't die, you can't spinning, you can't warp, you can't weave, whoo, you can't type, you can't sew, you can't tear, you can't trap, whoo, you can't slaughter, you can't flay, you can't cure, you can't smooth, you can't score, you can't cut, you can't write, you can't erase, you can't build, whoo, you can't demolish, whoo, you can't extinguish a fire, you can't ignite a fire. Wow. Anyway, there's a lot of laws that you can't do on the Sabbath day. And let me tell you something. God sure enforces the Sabbath rule. He gets awful angry if you don't keep it. Now this is a long verse, but I'm going to put it up. Might be a couple of couple of frames here for you to read. Numbers chapter fifteen, verse thirty two through thirty six. Now while the sons of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering wood on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron, and to all the congregation, and they put him in custody because it had been declared what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him to death with stones, just as the Lord I commanded Moses. Wow. A big wow. Well, all I got to say is if the Lord God said it was okay, then it must be okay. Yeah. We're Christians now, Lucy. Yes. So it's okay to drag somebody out and start throwing big old rocks at them until they die. And what did he do? <laughs> he did something horrible. He was picking up sticks. Picking up, how, how dare he? How dare he go against the Lord God 
Exodus 31, 14. Therefore, you are to observe the Sabbath, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. This God ain't effing around. And what's funny to me is that I hear Christians say, well, that's the old law. That's the old law. And that doesn't matter anymore. Hmm. Well, found a verse in the New Testament. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Who said that, Lucy? It was Jesus. Jesus? You mean Jesus Christ? The one and only, you Think know. not I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I not to destroy them. Mm, interesting. I wonder why Christians aren't pulling people out in the streets and stoning them to death. I wonder why Christians aren't stoning each other to death because all of them get pretty much keep the Sabbath on Sunday. We should be stoning. We should be keeping the law. Well, you're, you're just... Well, that's a rational thing to say because it's in the Bible. We're supposed to do everything in the Bible. The Bible's 100% true. That's what Christians tell me. We gotta obey God 100%. Praise the Lord! Alright, that takes us to the fifth commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, I'm not going to say much about that, because you should honor your mother and your father. But then again, I found another curious verse in Matthew. Very curious. Here we got Jesus. You know, I did what you folks told me to do. You Christians, you were right the whole time. I actually did some research. And I looked in Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. These are the words of Christ. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Curious. Curious. This man, Jesus, against the old Ten Commandments. I thought you were supposed to honor your mother and your father. Now Jesus is saying, don't. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Please, folks. Please, you Christians. You know we're just, we're just dumb, dumb, dumb compared to you. So please, help us out here. Why is it that Jesus goes against the fifth commandment. Here's the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Interesting. Well, what I like so much, Lucy, is that God never goes against his own commandments. Wait a second, Entropy. I think there are verses where God kills people. No. You can't yeah. be right. No. Well, tell you what. I know that you've done some research, so why don't you read some of those research things that you've got? Sure. Here's one. And we took all his cities at the time and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little ones of every city we left none to remain hmm. Deuteronomy 2 uh, verse 34 interesting so God has people killed hmm. well, let me look at this other one you put up and we utterly destroyed them utterly destroying the men women and children of every city Deuteronomy 3, 6. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, 
Thou shalt smite them, and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Deuteronomy 7.2 Now, I'm not going to read every single thing, every single time there's genocide in the Bible. Because if I were to do that, I'd be reading and reading and reading. And as you Christians so plainly point out to me all the time, I ain't smart enough to be doing a lot of reading. But I think, I think maybe, maybe you Christians could find a few verses for yourself in the Bible where there's genocide. I don't know. Me, I'm just a fledgling Christian. You gotta, you gotta help me out here, cause I don't understand, Lucy. Why would God tell other people not to kill, and then turn around and tell them to kill? I'm confused. Are you? Hell yes. Heck yeah, sweetie. We say heck yeah now. Oh, that's right. Oh my goodness. Ah oh, boy. You'll learn. You're learning time. We're both learning time because we're just infants in this here Christianity. We don't understand it. Not at all. Thank yeah. God we've yeah. got them there Christians out there so much brighter than us that can figure this out and explain it to us. Here's another one. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Commandment number seven. You know what? I think it's a man. This is an easy commandment to keep. Do you know why, Lucy? Do you know why I say that? Hmm. Well, as a man, I could take to myself many, many wives. According to the Bible, I can take many wives. And you know what? I'm not even going to show you those verses. Just to, just to bother you Christians. Well, there, there is polygamy in the Bible. So really, if a, if a guy wants to screw around, he just marry as many women as he wants, as long as they're willing to marry him, I guess. But isn't there a contradiction in the Bible then? I mean, if if you have stories about that, and then you, and then here it says, Thou shalt not commit adultery, what do you make of that? Well, that's just for you women. Uh. Oh, that's just for you women. You don't get it. You see, it means women can't commit adultery, but men can. Okay? Do you understand now? You see, I'm getting it. I'm getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. You understand. It's okay, sweetie. We, we men, we were created first. So we're lots more smart than you there, there women, right? Right, man? Anyway. Well, the Bible does say we are handmaidens of men. Damn straight. I mean, darn straight. And if you're a woman, according to the Bible, you're not going to be able to get a divorce. <laughs> I know a girl in my former life that's going to be surprised about that one. Anyhow, let's get to number eight. You want to read that with me there, Lucy? Um, well, thou shall not steal. Thou shall not steal. Hmm. You know what's really good? Thou shall not steal. Well, I gotta say that I am proud to know that there wasn't a time ever, ever in the Bible where God permitted any of his people to go out there and steal. This Lord God is a gracious loving God. Hallelujah. And, hallelujah. And he would not allow anyone to take what is not rightfully theirs. And not only that, not only that, he wouldn't allow anyone to rape, pillage, to just arbitrarily kill people. He would never do that himself. And I know this. I know this, Christians. I know this, Christians, because I have now done my research. I am so grateful to you, 
Christian, so grateful. I, I can't tell you how grateful I am to be accepting of your God now. And now I know, now I know that this Lord God is a God of love, a God of purity, righteousness, and he would never, never do anything wrong. Thank you, Christians. Thank you for pointing this out to Lucy and I. And please don't hesitate to constantly tell us that we are still going to hell because we need to be reminded that it is only through the righteous, righteous loving, loving acceptance of this benevolent God that we will not be cast into fire that he created. <sighs> Thank you, Christians. Thank you for showing us the way. Ah, oh, but I digress. What were we talking about? The Ten Commandments, honey. Oh, yeah. you got to forgive me. I'm a little slow. Anyway, now... We go to the next one. Uh, uh, commandment number number nine. You want to read that for us, please, Lucy? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Fantastic. You don't don't lie. You know. You know, I I have to come out and apologize, because. Lucy and I, we, we, we did a horrible, horrible thing and put a video up a while back talking about Christian lies. And Christians, you can't possibly be lying because that is in the Ten Commandments. And Christians, you abide by the Ten Commandments. You wouldn't lie about things like saying a hundred thousand Christians have been martyred in the last ten years. You wouldn't lie about things like that. If you, if, if you wonder what I'm talking about, I'll put a link to the other video in the uh, in the comment section. Do you do Christians ever lie about you, Lucy? No, well, they were one hundred percent right about me. Yeah, uh, I failed you guys. Yeah. You know, you got you Christians were uh, just great examples, and I'm gonna follow your examples and even the examples of what God puts in the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. So when those Christians called you a whore, when those Christians called you a liar, when those Christians called you a Satan worshiper, they must have been right because the Christians would not bear false witness against anyone, right? I couldn't see it. They were 100% correct. Wow. She was, she was all these things, Christian, and she didn't know it. But thank you, thank you for pointing it out to us now us young young infant Christians that just need your help you Christians were correct when you were calling me all you know all these names you know that I was satanic that I was evil and I mean pure pure dark evil and you know I I am Satan and I'm this and that you are 100% correct I have done all these things I'm like I was like I'm like the serpent in the garden of Eden going around doing all these things <laughs> I didn't know I didn't know she had blinded me I was under her spell but now Christians Christians have delivered me and delivered You're her correct. and now we only work towards praising God and Jesus well this here video's gotten a little long. So I think we're about finished because we're on the 10th commandment. Okay. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Hmm. Well, I tell you what. 
if Christians did this, the entire United States economy would go under. Because it pretty much is trying to keep up with the Joneses, aren't you Christians? Oh, please, forgive me. I, I, I fell back in my old habits. I'm a Christian now. So, I'm not going to covet. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to bear false witness against my neighbor. I'm not going to commit adultery or kill or, or curse God or any of these other things. Because I'm a Christian now. And all of you abide by the Ten Commandments. You are such shining examples. You are like a... A... Uh... A village, a city on a hill. I just want you to know that. I thank Yeshua, Jesus Christ, for you wonderful Christians. Amen. 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 Where would we be without you folks? Now, at the end of this video, we just want to say we apologize so much. Because after reading the Ten Commandments, we realize, without a shadow of a doubt, not only do you Christians abide by it, but your God does too. Right, Lucy? Right. Well, look forward to many, many, many Christian videos ahead, because we be Christians now. And since... Well, why don't you go first and tell him what, uh... What, what I'm going to be now? What kind yeah. of Christian I'm going to be now? Yes. I'm going to be a Presbyterian, I think. I'm going to go to the Presbyterian Church. And since you know, you, a lot of you have uh, been correct that, yes, I am Jewish, and so I'm going to be, um, since I uh, accept Jesus Christ, Yeshua, I'm going to... I'm going to the um, Jews for Jesus synagogue. Praise God. <laughs> Jew, a Jew, and a Presbyterian. Boy, nothing can stop us now. And I'll be following all the laws of the commandments, all the laws of the Old and New Testament. Well, you damned straight. You better be following them or you're going to be stoned to death, right? <laughs> of course. Well, now, so, the new Entropy 777 is signing off, and you, Lucy? Here I am, Lucy, signing off. God bless you. God bless you. Everyone. Our God is an awesome